Hi there, my name is Podrick French and I'm today dealing with dairy farm systems and farming today with tomorrow in mind. At this board, we're going to focus on three topics. We're going to focus on what are the, how the profitability of dairy farms has evolved over the last number of years, what are the KPIs that are going to drive it to increase profitability over the next number of years, we're going to particularly focus in on stocking rate, and lastly, I'm joined by Connor Hogan, who's going to talk about a sustainable labour input into our dairy farm systems. So if we look back at how the dairy industry has evolved over the last 10 years, and we look at the key performance indicators, the key technologies that drive the profitability of a spring calving dairy farm, we can see that we've made significant progress. Okay? If we look at the key traits like six week calving rate, we're going in the right direction. If we look at the age of our herd, it drives milk production, it reduces costs, we're going in the right direction. And the key driver in any pasture-based system of profitability is tons of grass utilized per hectare. And again, we can see from the numbers here that we're heading in the right direction. We're still well off of what is the potential target that's there where the top dairy farms are at. On average, we're, we're, we still have a lot of potential, but all of these are going the wrong, in the right direction. There's one trait here that we're look, going to look at and focus in more detail is the percentage grass in the diet. That's not going in the right direction and we'll deal more with that later, okay? But all of this technical innovation has significantly improved the profitability of our dairy farm systems. That coupled with the expansion, the almost doubling of milk solid production, combined with adopting these technologies has led to a lot more revenue at farm level, a lot better income by dairy farmers, and more income for the economy as a whole. Okay. If we then focus on what has happened over the last 12 months, and particularly last year, we can see here from this graph, on the top blue line we have the gross output, or the milk price, okay, on dairy farms. And we can see, you're all very well aware, that 2022 was an extraordinary year, got a massive spike in milk prices, and that was combined with an inflation in costs, which overall led to the difference here being bigger than it ever was, and probably the best year we've had in dairy. However, we're now experiencing a significant correction. Okay, you're all well aware that milk price has come down significantly, and there's not the same reduction after happening in costs. Costs are still stubbornly high on a lot of farms, as we can see at the moment. A lot of the inputs are still very high, and milk price has come down. So this is where we forecast profitability is likely to be this year, which is you know back to probably similar levels it was prior to 22. But that's cost of living has increased significantly in the meantime. That's going to put pressures on the financials of a lot of dairy farms. I suppose what we're really saying at the moment is, at this stage, there's a lot of things after moving over the last year and a half. It will be very prudent to do a budget from now to year end. How much more are you going to spend between now and year end? How much more income are you going to get between now and year end, assuming milk price stays roughly where it is at the moment? Where are you going to end up from a cash point of view at year end? And once you have prepared that cash flow, you need to look at, say, some of the big spends. Maybe you could postpone some discretionary spending around capital, or maybe not, okay? But you have to look at it anyway, do a forecast right out to the year end, seeing is there surplus cash available or not on the farm. Also, it's advisable to shop around at the moment because there is, uh, there is downward pressure on prices, but some of them are quite slow and moving downwards, okay? The other thing to, I suppose, focus on is we've had a relatively poor grass growing year, okay? Fodder is scarcer now than it was this time last year on farms. You need to assess what stock you're likely to have for next winter and how much fodder you need for those stocks, okay? Once you have that done, you can make decisions relatively soon on offloading stock to try and reduce the demand next winter if you need to do it. But without doing a budget for next winter of where you are at the moment and what, you, what stocks you have in reserve and what you'll require for next winter, you can't do that. Okay, the last thing I said I was going to talk about was stocking rate and how it has changed on our farms over the last number of years and in particularly how it influences this variable or the percentage grass in the diet. If we look first at the numbers up on top, we can see that overall stocking rates on farms have increased marginally by about 10% over the last decade. Okay, and grass growth and grass utilization has increased by that amount to match it, or by more than that. But what's more concerning is the very significant increase in stocking rate. 
of about 30% on, on the milking platform. The area which the cows are walking to every day, the stocking rate has gone up very significantly on it. And it's not matched by the increase in grass growth. If we look at this graph here, and it tries to separate out, relate the grass production with the actual stocking rate and how you can feed the cows. And if we take the green line here firstly, and this relates grass growth here to fully feeding the cows. So at this stocking rate and this grass growth, you're fully feeding the cows on the farm. We know that our best farms are growing about 13 tonnes per hectare. That's what's the average of farms on pasture base. At that growth, if we want to fully feed our cows from that farm growing 13 tonnes per hectare, it'll sustain a stocking rate about two and a half cows to the hectare, cow to the acre. That's what we can carry with the grass that we're growing at the moment. Once you go above that level, you can import some forage from outside the farm, import some of the winter silage requirement, okay? But you're moving away then from a pasture-based system, you're reducing the percentage grass in the diet. I suppose we believe that it's prudent to bring in about half your winter feed requirement. And at that, growing 13 tonnes, bringing in some silage from the outside block, bringing in about half a tonne of dry matter per cow, we can carry a stocking rate of about 2.8 cows per hectare. Once you go above that, pretty much all of the feed for those extra cows is being imported into the farm. That's a low margin business, bringing in feed from outside of the blanket platform to carry these extra cows. So these extra cows are making extra work for you, there's extra capital involved in putting them there, and they're giving a very small margin, and they're exposing our businesses, they're exposing the system to potential deficits in feed throughout the year with very little financial benefit. Now, for the last part of this board, I'm going to hand you over to Conor Hogan, who's going to talk about sustainably social labour on dairy farms. Yeah, um, thanks, Parik. So I suppose where, where Parik has touched on the economic um, parameters and how we can in increase our efficiency in that sense, I suppose I'm going to touch on some of the social aspects, particularly in terms of the farmer and, and their own workload. What our research has shown is that the best farmers out there, that there is the potential there to work 50 hours per week in spring. And I suppose where Parik has touched on the key KPIs here, we believe that that 50 hour week in spring should be added to this and be a, be a key KPI of, of our dairy systems. Um, in this sense, the key to achieving this on, on, on this subset of farms was in terms of our finishing time. So reducing that, getting that finish time in the evening closer to 6, to, to 6 p.m. Um, to go with that, I suppose it's important to remember that, the, that these farmers were operating in a labour efficient system. So it wasn't as if they were doing all of um, outsourcing the labour to other sources. They, they were operating within labour efficient systems and they also had similar herd sizes um, across the board. So there was no scale effect present between them farms. So when we take, when we take our simple system, um, that is really what's the key for these farmers. Um, in terms of that simple system, we're talking about having that efficient grass-based system. So focusing again on the key KPIs that Park has, has outlined, focusing on our stocking rate and so on. All of these things build into having that efficient system from a labour perspective. Um, secondly, we're talking about having an easy care cow. So what the data is telling us is that farms with, um, with, with herds with a higher EBI, they're, they're more labour efficient than, than peers that have, that have lower ones. Additionally, work organisation is, is, is a huge element. We're talking about this in two senses. Firstly, in terms of the farmer's own mindset and their own values around time and, and people and, and labour and managing it in, in, in that sense. And secondly, we're talking about outsourcing our labour, particularly in terms of, um, in terms of contractors, especially, especially in terms of the fertiliser, in terms of the slurry um, and so on in spring. Finally then, another key aspect is in terms of our facilities and our technologies. So focusing specifically here on milking and calf care, they're consuming roughly 50% of all, of all labour input in spring. So the facilities, the technologies that can be implemented in, 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 for these tasks are especially important. And there's a range of ideas um, on show in the Working Effectively Village around, around labour saving ideas for these tasks. Finally then, on this, this aspect, what the data is telling us is that the labour efficient farms are also more profitable. So, and that's before we're even incorporating labour cost. 
So what this is telling us is that the, the extra work that is going in on, on non-labour efficient farms, it's not resulting in a higher profitability. So what it's really saying is that there's no reason for us, for us to be putting in that time input and it, and it pays to be more labour efficient. So that's really what I wanted to touch on in terms of the, the social aspect of our farms. So to, to bring it back then in terms of our take home messages and what Porrick has really focused on here and, and a lot of it links back into the social aspects too is in terms of focusing on the basics. We're talking here about our key four or five key KPIs in our grazing systems and our stocking rate here as well. Se secondly, we're looking at our budgeting and we're looking at our cost controlling now. So the key actions that Porrick has highlighted here um, making them decisions now and making them early um, so to, to make, I suppose, positive decisions. Finally then, we're focusing on becoming that 50-hour farmer in spring. That's, that, I suppose, is going to be a key benchmark going forward in terms of our, our grazing systems from a, from a social perspective, and I suppose the data is telling us that it can be done.